Did you know all molecules are sticky? Really, all of them. All molecules love to stick to other molecules. It's this stickiness that allows the gecko to climb up a wall. And the stickiness of a molecule is just another way to talk about intermolecular forces. That's the attractive forces between molecules. And they play an important role in determining the properties of everything around us. For example, natural gas, which you might use in your stove, is a gas because it has relatively weak intermolecular forces. While gasoline, which you get at the gas pump, is a liquid because it has strong intermolecular forces. In this lab, we're going to visualize these intermolecular forces by taking a dropper and dropping one drop at a time different solutions onto a penny. The more drops a penny can hold, the stronger the intermolecular forces. So let's compare these intermolecular forces by taking a look at drops on a penny. Let's get to it. Let's begin by reviewing today's lesson objectives. First, we'll review intermolecular forces. Then we'll introduce adhesion and surface tension. Lastly, we'll introduce today's lab activity. We are going to be doing a lab today, and that means there's required materials. So let's review what you need to get this lab done. You'll need water, cooking oil, dish soap. So this is just like the soap you would use for washing pots and pans. Two droppers, so anything that drops liquid. So this could be a dropper from a medicine bottle or like a turkey baster, anything that you can drop one drop at a time out of. And if you only have one dropper, that'll probably be just fine. And then three pennies. We're going to be dropping liquids on the pennies. Again, you could probably get by with just one penny if you needed to. So here's all the required materials that you need. If you want, if you're ready to get started, you can pause this video and go gather all these materials. All right, well, with all of these materials, we're going to try to answer the question, how many drops of a liquid fit on a penny? So we'll slowly drop liquids onto a penny, and eventually it'll look like this. This is basically the most drops we could fit on this penny. If we add just one more, the water is going to fall off. It's kind of interesting, though, because there's so much water on the penny that actually the water area is bigger than the penny. You notice there that the water is hanging over the edges of the penny. How is it doing that? It turns out it has everything to do with the molecules. Here we have water. And the thing to know about water is that oxygen turns out to be negatively charged. It doesn't have a full extra electron though. Remember, electrons are negative. So to say oxygen is negatively charged means there's some extra electrons over there. It doesn't have a full extra electron. And so for that reason, we use this Greek letter delta here. And that means that oxygen is just a little bit negative. So not quite fully negative one, it just has a little bit of extra electron density hanging out over there. Okay, well, if oxygen's a little negative, what do you think that means about hydrogen? That means hydrogen has to be a little positive. Well, things get more interesting when we remind ourselves that in a cup of water, we don't have one water molecule. We have a bunch of water molecules. So here we see three water molecules. Of course, there's many, many, many more in our cup. And the important thing to notice is that because the hydrogens are positive and the oxygens are negative, there's going to be attractive forces between them. So that hydrogen on the right is attracted to the oxygen over there on the rightmost water molecule. And we have the same thing going on on the left over here. There's always an attractive force between our oxygen and hydrogen. These are intermolecular forces. What they do is they hold those water molecules together. So remember, intermolecular forces hold adjacent molecules together. Let's quickly review the types of intermolecular forces. First up, we have dispersion forces. So here we see an atom, and on the left-hand side, indicated in red, we have a positive charge, while on the right-hand side, in green, we have a negative charge. So that means that the electrons have shifted, and they're unequally shared for the moment by this atom. So dispersion forces are caused by temporary shifts of electrons. Which side of this atom do you think has more electrons? Well, the right side has more electrons. That's why it's negatively charged. And when we put a bunch of these atoms together, we see that there's attractive forces between them because we have negative forces stacking up against the positive ones. 
So dispersion forces are caused by temporary shifts of electrons. All molecules have dispersion forces. So no matter what molecule you're looking at, it's going to have dispersion forces. Next up, we'll talk about dipole forces. These are caused by permanent shifts of electrons. So here we have an HCl molecule, and the chlorine molecule permanently has a little extra electrons around it compared to the hydrogen. So the chlorine is negative while the hydrogen is positive. And if we imagine two of them next to each other, then we'll see that there's an attractive force between them. This happens whenever we have polar molecules. So only polar molecules have dipole forces. Next up, and lastly, we have hydrogen bonding. We've already seen an example of hydrogen bonding. Whenever we have water molecules, we'll always have hydrogen bonding. And they're caused by bigger permanent shifts of electrons. So really, they're just a special case of dipole forces that are extra strong. How do we identify if something has hydrogen bonds? Well, they're molecules with H on N, O, or F. So if you ever have hydrogen on nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine, you'll have these forces, hydrogen bonds. So then there are three intermolecular forces, dispersion forces, dipole forces, and hydrogen bonds. As we go down this list, they get stronger. So hydrogen bonds tend to be the strongest of our intermolecular forces. Let's take a look at a tricky looking example that has a very nice trick to getting the answer. Identify the intermolecular forces. Okay, you might be scared because this is a huge molecule and I get that, it's a little scary, but here is a trick. If your molecule only has hydrogen and carbon, then there's only dispersion forces. So remember that if we see just a bunch of hydrogen and carbon, then we're going to have dispersion forces only. All right, so much for reviewing intermolecular forces. Remember, in this lab, we're going to ask how many drops of a liquid fit on a penny. We already took a look at this penny and saw how tons of water droplets fit on there. And we said that the reason there's so much water that can stay on there is because the water molecules are sticky. They're attracted to each other via hydrogen bonding. This has a special name, cohesion. Cohesion is the attractive forces between molecules of the same type. So here we have cohesion because a bunch of water molecules are sticking to each other, and that's what allows them to hang over the edge. You might have one other question though, which is, why is the edge rounded? In other words, like, why isn't it rectangular? Why is it kind of a round edge? It might seem obvious, but it's actually a hard question to answer. It turns out this has to do with surface tension. Surface tension is the tendency of a liquid to minimize its surface area. So the reason that these edges here are rounded is because it minimizes surface area. Now, that's because of a geometric fact about spheres. So here we have a sphere. It turns out a special property of spheres is that they have the smallest surface area for their size of any shape. So spheres minimize surface area. And that's why water droplets all around us tend to be round. Here we see a bunch of droplets on a leaf. And they're round because that's the shape that minimizes the surface area of the water droplet. They're also kind of compressed, and that's because of gravity. That's really the same thing we see here. We imagine that this water would be sort of spherical shaped, sitting on top of the penny, and then gravity squishes it down into sort of a pancake shape. What we'll be doing in this lab is comparing water versus oil in terms of how many drops we can fit on a penny. We already took a close look at water, and we saw that water has hydrogen bonds. So when we think about the intermolecular forces present in our solutions, the water will have hydrogen bonds. What about oil? What sort of intermolecular forces will we have there? Well, here's the oil molecule, and it looks big and scary. Once again, though, we have a handy trick. All of these squiggles are a fancy way to draw carbon and hydrogen. Basically, I'll tell you a little secret, chemists are kind of lazy and they don't want to draw all those carbons and hydrogens, so they came up with a code, which is squiggles. Silly, I know. But the point is, that's all carbon and hydrogen. Remember, if your molecule has only hydrogen and carbon, then there's only dispersion forces. So all of this big, long chain of squiggly stuff, well, there's dispersion forces only. So when we compare water versus oil, we're really comparing something with hydrogen bonds to something with dispersion only. So that's the sort of interesting comparison we're doing here. We're going to run three trials where we take a dropper and we slowly add oil or water and we count how many drops we can add until it overflows the penny. Here's a tip though. Be sure to add just one drop at a time. Here's what I mean. 
Notice that the drops clearly roll out of the dropper one at a time. This is not squirting water, it's dripping it. And this is important because each drop turns out to be the same size. And so by counting the number of drops, we're actually measuring the volume that can hang out on top of the penny. Once we've filled in this chart for oil and water, we're going to add just one more substance. That's water with soap. So the reason you need your dish soap is so that you can add it to water and make soapy water. It turns out that soap reduces the surface tension of water. And so we'll ultimately be able to compare water, oil, and water with soap. Before you get started, make a hypothesis. That's just a fancy way to say make a guess. So what you want to guess is which liquid can the penny hold the most drops of? So make a guess and see if you're right. Let's review what we've learned. First, we reviewed intermolecular forces. We saw that these are attractive forces between molecules, and importantly, our water will have hydrogen bonds, and our oil will have just dispersion forces. Then we introduced adhesion and surface tension. Remember that adhesion is the attractive forces between molecules of the same type, and surface tension is the tendency of molecules to have the smallest possible surface area. Lastly, we introduced today's lab activity, where we'll be comparing how many drops of water, oil, and soapy water can fit on a penny. Good luck. Hey, hey.